6.40 a.m. Just woke up. Roslyn has kind of gone nutty overnight. It's gotten really intense. Looks like a serious hurricane. All right, just about ready to go. Here's the latest. That's where I am. That's where the hurricane is. And that's where I'm heading. That's San Blas in Nayarit. Thinking that's a good starting point. I think that's where the hurricane's going. At least, that's what the computer models are saying. Nice sunrise in Guadalajara. Ready to hit the road. Uh, well, it's gonna be a tough chase because of the small size, especially, and it's getting stronger. Um, today is gonna be a decisive day. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen, but San Blas is gonna be a good starting point, as you said. Yeah, I agree with you. I think um, I agree that it's gonna be hard because it's small. It's a small hurricane, and it's gonna be a small target, and we're not gonna have radar, mm -hmm. and that's gonna make it tough, also. Exactly. So let's hope for the best. Hey, hey, from San Blas, a very cool little beach city in the Mexican state of Nayarit. Uh, this is under threat from Hurricane Rosalind, Category 4 Hurricane Rosalind. Could come ashore close to here, although I've been looking at the computer models and it looks like San Blas, this location here, is at the southern end of the possible range of landfall locations. So I think I'm going to spend a lot of this afternoon scouting the coast north of here as I zero in on where Rosalind's going to come ashore. Should lose a little strength before landfall, but I think it's going to come in hot. six o'clock and we're on the road still just scouting locations. Oh, we 
probably have another hour or two of daylight and it's gonna be dark and we're gonna be chasing at night. It's not ideal, but it is what it is. Just playing it by ear, I don't know exactly what's gonna happen with this one, just being flexible, open-minded, and just, uh, you know, ready to keep moving until we get inside this thing. And a little bit of a obstacle in the road here are some cows who just decided to kind of come in the middle of the road. Hopefully they'll let us through. <laughs> Hopefully they'll be cooperative. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hopefully just be careful we don't want to hurt any of them. Wow, they're just cutting loose tonight. There's some cops behind us and those bright lights are maybe helping move them. Yeah. Okay. Almost to Santa Cruz. Hopefully that was the last obstacle. A little before 8 p.m., and we're in a small town called Santa Cruz in Nayarit. And uh, the mood around town is very kind of calm and mellow. Folks just hanging out. We're hearing music coming from somewhere. It seems like there's a party. Can't quite figure out where it is. Uh, but there's a hurricane coming, a Category 4. And Roslyn might pass right over this town or very close. And just, it's kind of hard to imagine. It's so calm, it's so tranquil here. And the idea that this town right here could be inside the jaws of a Category 4 hurricane in nine hours is kind of crazy. We hope not, it's a nice town, and we just had amazing tamales at this place. Awesome. driving around Tuxpan, we decided this is where we're gonna kind of get a room and just chill for a few hours before we decide on our final location to hunt down Hurricane Roslyn. Tuxpan is nice, it's a nice place, it's kind of equidistant from all the potential places where we might go. And it's far inland so it's protected. Found a room in Tuxpan. Feeling good about it. Gracias, muchas gracias. All right, so what do you think? Cool. I'm happy. I'm happy. They're friendly. As long as we have a bad, yeah. you know, lay down. Yeah, this is cool. I'm cool. Yeah. All right, this is the room we're gonna stay. All right, so it's game day. Uh, it's really early in the morning, it's about 3 a.m. and uh, got about an hour of sleep in this here bed, in this room in Tuxpan, and uh, then got up and Eric and I looked at the, uh, the, the satellite motion and the radar motion in the Los Cabos radar. You could just see the eye of Hurricane Rosalind. It's just barely inside radar range, so that was really helpful. And basically we mapped out a sort of northern cluster of options and a southern cluster of options. And after a lot of sort of debate and discussion, we decided to go for the northern option. So we're heading back towards Santa Cruz, that general area. We have a couple of other places we can get to that are a little further south of that from there, and that's that's the decision we're making. It seems to be where the hurricane's heading. It's tough, a little bit of hand wringing, but here we go. All right, time to go. It's already starting to rain in Tuxpan. That means it's worse along the coast. 
Hurricane's moving in. We probably waited too long. But we can get out there pretty fast. All right. Let's see. How does this work? Oh, yeah. Like that. Okay. All right. And there's the car. All right. Roads are already a little flooded here. Less than 30 minutes away, conditions not too bad yet. Moderate rain, not too much wind at all. I would call it a light breeze actually. We are almost to Santa Cruz, just about five minutes, maybe less. Uh, just looked at the radar again. Los Cabos radar just barely picks up the eye of this hurricane. Just It's just barely within range. And it seems to confirm our decision. It looks like Roslyn's on a straight north-northeast heading. It looks like it's it looks like it's coming to Santa Cruz. I, I feel like we made the right choice. Of course, you can never know for sure, but I think we did the right thing. Just a little further. I hate this part of the chase. I call it the armpit of the chase. It's that last little part. It's very unpleasant. It's like mile 24 of the marathon. You hit the wall emotionally. You just gotta keep going. Push yourself. Don't make mistakes. Down to the wire. We're just outside of Santa Cruz and the wind, we're starting to actually see wind now. Not crazy wind, but it's it's gone from a almost completely calm to getting some gusts across the highway. I really think we're sliding into home plate with this. And we left just in time because it's, I think if we waited any longer, it might have been too long because I mean, the conditions are rapidly deteriorating now. We've got about five more kilometers, about three miles to go. I think we'll be okay, but it's hard to know for sure. there and the conditions have calmed down a little we must be between rain bands but yep here we go welcome to Santa Cruz we've done it all right so we're in the main intersection in Santa Cruz and uh, now our next goal is to find a place to ride out the hurricane and remember there's a school up ahead oh look at that lightning okay about 4 30 and the wind is really picking up all of a sudden. It's getting that howling sound. Okay, and it seems like just all of a sudden we're getting into it. Calibrating our kestrel meters and we gotta do it fast because the center of the hurricane I think is getting very close. We're already down to 992 millibars around, or at least mine say 992, yours says 993. Uh, but that means that the hurricane's definitely getting close. So I'm gonna plant these in an undisturbed place and now we're collecting data. And outside, it's getting kind of stormy. We're getting some big gusts. Some of them are pushing trees way over. Hurricane's close. We don't seem to have any connectivity now to the outside world, so. Okay. Okay. Yep, okay, so the wind is definitely we're probably getting tropical storm winds. Get back. Yeah. section here. Okay. This palm tree over there. Okay. Okay. Whoa! Alright. Trying to head back into town. Yeah. It's already branches and stuff in the road. Is it moving? Yeah, I think it moved a little, so go real slow over it. Yeah. Ah, okay. Oof. Go 
outside conditions are, are very rapidly getting worse. Okay. There we go. Just before 5 a.m., the wind is really picking up now. We're seeing some flying debris, pieces of trees coming into the road. The wind is making that howling sound, and the pressure is dropping really fast. Actually, a couple of millibars in a few minutes. So uh, it definitely seems like we are getting into this hurricane. I have the feeling that we picked the right spot just by the way the conditions are deteriorating so rapidly. The way the winds are really picking up. We're also getting a lot of lightning. Okay, we are in the heart of Santa Cruz and conditions are really getting rough. Okay. Here we have little places to stand and hide. Okay. So I would say, okay, so and pull it back so it's not blocking your view. And then just keep the lights on. We keep the motor running. So if it gets yeah. bad, get under okay. there, and I'll get under there. Okay. 980. Holy 980. That's the fastest pressure drop I've ever seen. Third, get ready to get under. It'll be good because this is hard, and the wall is cement, so you'll be okay.
moving quick. Yeah. That's the Russian one? Yeah. 975.7, so it's going down again. is really fluctuating wildly, but it's down to 967.8. Wow, it's just, it is, oh my god. It, do, it dropped a millibar in like 20 seconds. Wow! Okay, 527, the wind has really calmed down all of a sudden, all of a sudden. Pressure's hovering mid-960s, going up and down. Some wild fluctuations. It's going down again. Oh yeah, it's dropping really hard again. Like crazy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's 530 and it is really quieted down. The wind is not calm but but really quieted down. It might be on the edge of the eye. Thirty-one. It's just completely calmed down, and the pressure. What is it? It's nine sixty-seven. Just going up and down, up and down. Wow. Okay, but we are definitely in the eye, at least on the edge of it. And what a violent hurricane this is!
Almost 6 a.m. Wind is blowing like crazy. We're cowering in a corner here. Wind all around us, just blowing like nuts. Check that out. Really, really dangerous conditions. Five minutes after six, feels like it's finally calming down. Feels like the wind might be getting below hurricane force again. We had some scary moments in the last hour. That was, that was pretty intense, very scary. Debris flying every direction. We were ducking under a uh, like a sort of a counter at a restaurant on a patio. Yeah. I thought we were going to get hit by flying debris. It feels better now, but uh. Definitely some close calls. This was a very violent hurricane. I shouldn't say was, we're still in it, but it feels like maybe we got through the worst of it. Yeah, hopefully it's the worst of it already passed yeah. and we're safe and here. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. 613, the wind has rapidly calmed down. No longer a hurricane. It's still blowing, but nothing like before. Barely lasted an hour. Look at that. Totally calming down. Hardly tropical storm force now. 6.23 a.m. and the hurricane's over. I mean, it's still a little windy out, but it's gone. It's pulled away. Pressure's back up over a thousand millibars. This was a violent hurricane, but it came and went quickly. A classic deep tropical, small, intense hurricane. Really impressive. Had some scary moments. Really, really angry storm, angry energy. And a lot of light with tourists we just saw. But thank God we're okay. The storm's moving on. Hello. Hello. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, he's shaking. All right. Don't worry. Don't worry. You're okay. You're okay. Oh. You're okay, baby. You're okay. Oh. The sun is starting to come up. This place is a mess. These are the owners of the building just saying hello to us. They're very nice, they're very hospitable. Okay, okay, sure. I'm in the main intersection in Santa Cruz. Uh, this here is like a village clock, just totally smashed to bits. And look at this, there's concrete all just thrown across the street. And check these out. These are heavy pieces. This is heavy concrete that the wind just hurled across the street. Hola, buenos días. Y luego nos venimos para acá cuando cambiaron el viento. Cuando empezó a volar, estábamos. Cayeron a un ladito. 
And what happened? They were confident that nothing was going to happen, and now they believe that it should happen. So what did she say? What did she say about the future? In the future occasions, they are going to evacuate as soon as they are told to go away. Just an hour after the terrifying impact of Hurricane Rosalind, and when I say terrifying, I mean it. This thing packed a punch. The center of the hurricane, the eye passed right over this town. It was a small hurricane. It did not last long, maybe less than an hour, but it was extremely violent. And you see the scars everywhere. Signs blown out, roofs ripped off, uh, garage doors torn away, windows broken, uh, trees down everywhere. I mean, it's it's a mess here. Just a lot of destruction. This, this hurricane was really intense. This is where Eric and I rode out Hurricane Roslyn. We were under there because the roof totally blew away. This is the outdoor part, this is the patio. But inside wasn't much better. Look at this, the roof just totally blew away. We've been helping the uh, owners clean it up. But then if you come in here, you could see this middle part of the house was okay. But then if you go to the back part, look at this. Their house, the whole, the roof of the entire back part just blew away, all of it. You can 
see a lot of houses are unroofed. The ones with concrete roofs are okay. A little learning for the future, I guess. I have to say I am honestly glad that it got out of the experience in one piece. And if you look around town, you can see folks cleaning up and just sort of sharing their experiences. My general impression is that folks are a bit shell-shocked by this hurricane, by how severe it was. I think everyone is genuinely surprised. They were not expecting such a terrifying hurricane, such a ferocious one. A lot of people talked about how scared they were during the hurricane. One woman said, next time they tell me to evacuate, I'm leaving. I don't want to go through that again. One woman talked about how she was huddled in a corner with her kids after the roof ripped off and they were crying and screaming. I mean, there was a, this was a night of terror. Fortunately, it's passed and now the cleanup begins. Now you hear that buzzing sound behind me, those parasols? Yep, they've been going all morning and they've been clearing the roads and getting wreckage cleaned up. And I have to say of all the countries where I've experienced hurricanes and typhoons, I think the Mexicans get the blue ribbon for how fast and how aggressively they respond to a hurricane wreckage. Uh, this town hours ago was completely isolated. The only road in and out of the town was blocked with uh, fallen power poles and stuff. The road is now open miraculously and it's not even noon. And we are leaving Santa Cruz, this battered, beat up town.